I've been in, actually, I've been in Ascona since 1985. Um, before Ascona, uh, it was Lugano. So I had two years in Lugano, and now it's since 19, uh, yeah, 1985. Here, so it's a long time. I have a great relationship with it. It's a beautiful place. The, the, the ambience brings me uh, in a little bit way to my hometown, New Orleans, because we're, we're situated with the Lake Poncha train, you know, and, and, um, and so what we've been doing, especially since after the storm, we've been bringing a lot of this music even more and helping. And the, the, the good part, the really good part is, is that most every place that you go in the world, they know New Orleans music. They uh, feel the suffering that, that we went through when we lost so much of the historical part of, of the city after the storm. And um, we have missions all over. And what's great about it also is that it's bringing in, it's bringing um, interest to the young people, the, the 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 kids who they had nothing else to do. They didn't know what to do, okay? Because it was everything was so destroyed. But we had donations from from Japan, donations from all over the world, and they brought instruments. Instruments, you know, many many uh, people gave money, but they gave instruments, which I think it was great because it, it takes the focus on something different. It's it's here, but for them to be able to have a horn or a drum in their hands, you know, and create something that they never did before, and they all have this inside. We all have, we all have a little music somewhere inside of us, you know, and it's, it's been a wonderful uh, arrangement and it's been a great revival for the music for New Orleans and for these kids. When we speak about hot stuff, <laughs> yeah, when we think about hot stuff as far as the music is concerned, um, in the, and I do believe that it was the late of the 1800s, um, New Orleans was a hot spot, a hot port. We had ships that were coming back and forth into the city from all over the world and carrying uh, uh, soldiers and sailors. And when these ships start coming into the um, on in, in our little wharf area down on the French Quarter, um, they started to come in, and then that area, in that area, it was the first, the red light district. I think we had, I think, if I'm not wrong, we had one of the first in America, yeah? And there were bordellos and hot houses all over the place. And many of these uh, soldiers, uh, where they came from, they jumped ship and spent many times into these houses and also a lot of money into the city. This, so we were known we were known for a red light district, just as Amsterdam's probably been a, one of the first ones anyway, although you never know. But but what what actually was the great part about this is that musicians, there were musicians dedicated to all these houses. They had their bands playing in these uh, what they consider houses of ill repute. What's ill repute, you know? They had these musicians and, and Louis, Louis used to, actually Louis was very young at this time. Louis Armstrong was very young at this time, but he used to deliver coal. He used to have a little, a little uh, wagon and he used to, you know, Fistia, you understand coal? Coal, you know, they used to put these little coal chunks to keep the girls of the night warm, just in case it was too cold in the houses. And Louis used to bring, he, this was one of, I think this was one of his, his uh, first really excitement things for him, you know, bringing these coals to the, and he loved the music, so he had the music in his head and he could deliver these things. But in, in, the, in the late, uh, in the early part, I think it is uh, of the 1900s, then um, the, the government put a stop to it. Uh, and at that time, and it's a very funny thing because I do a song on this one, it's called Storyville, yeah? And um, when this happened, when they stopped, when they stopped this, it, the, the worst that 
The worst thing that, that, that actually happened is that they had to, they couldn't stay there anymore. You know, they had to go and look for another place as the same to go and make their living and their money. Well, the, the ladies of the night, well, with their suitcases trying to get a train or a boat, the, the, um, the, the pimps, you gotta call it that, you know, call it what it is. And the pimps, they would be behind them, and some of the musicians left also, you know. But uh, it was a, it was a hard, it was a very hard time, and to say such a thing, but it was, it was a hard time. And uh, so, when that stopped, well, you know, there's still places, there's still places. But it, it took, uh, it was, it's funny because you meet some of the, there's still some of the older guys that are still alive that can tell you, you know, uh, other, and many people who have read about it, they came down to just see about this place. You know, well, it's, it's not there. The area is there, but it's not the same as the brothels and all of this. So we had, we had um, bordellos, we had lots of alcohol, and because we were a ship, we were a port, we're still a port. So whenever they came in, New Orleans was jumping all the time. So this is, um, I think we got, I think we, we got this from the, the joy we had in our life, never thinking about the X part of it, you know, never thinking, but just having fun. It, it became, it became, um, uh, how can we say, n naughty when the government decided that the young men that were jumping ship shouldn't have this much fun. They should be saving the strength to fight the war, you know. But that don't always happen. <laughs> it, what happened, Cher has just made the movie called Burlesque, you know, and this was actual things that were going on. And it was, it was entertainment and still is entertainment. We can't call it a, uh, we, you know, we can't just do this and, and like this, you know, it's, it's part of, it's part of our life. It's part of what we are. And you know, many people do this, but it's whatever, you know. You cannot judge a person or a book by the cover without knowing what's going on, yeah? So because many of these girls that were, were what they considered women of the night or whatever, or burlesque, however, it wasn't that they were uh, selling their bodies. You know, if they felt like it, okay, that's one thing. But many of them had families. And that's how they had to make their money. That's how we paid the bills, yeah? That's how the song goes, yeah? <laughs> so um, I think that uh, by, uh, by bringing this in, because, you know, it's, it's there. It's been there in New Orleans. It just became a little bit uh, easier because it, became in, it came into one of the hotels as a night, sort of a casino kind of night thing. This is... I think it's absolutely great. You know, I think it's a wonderful idea. And I really like the idea that they put it into this. And, and the respect for it is that they do it after 12 o'clock. So it's not a thing of trying to, to bring in kids or, uh, or, or bring something in that don't want to come in. Whoever comes in, they want to come in, they want to be entertained, and they want to enjoy. This is entertainment. We, this is a festival. This is a music festival. It's a cultural festival. It's a folk festival. It's a jazz festival. It's everything. So to, in, to, um, to now integrate these things into it, I think it's wonderful.